like to tell the story of Herb Kelleher who, who, uh, at Southwest Airlines who was always asked what's the secret for Southwest success, you know, it was worth more than the other seven airlines combined at one point, probably still is. Uh, he said, well, you know, was it their airports they choose to fly out of? Was it, you know, the, the way that they handled the seating? Was it the their quick turnaround times? He said, well, you know, all that stuff is important, but what allows us to do all of that is our culture. And then when he, w when he was asked, okay, what's the secret of your culture? He said, it's caring for people in the totality of their lives. In other words, not just as employees, but as human beings. And that's something that I found with all the companies in this book. That these were companies where, it, they, and you can achieve that. You know, it gets harder, it's not impossible to achieve in a larger company, but it gets harder and harder to do it. Um, just because of the needs of being big. Sure. Now, that said, there are a lot of things that big companies can do that little companies can't do. So I'm not saying that one's good and one's bad. Uh, I'm saying that there are trade-offs. You know, the important thing for entrepreneurs is to be aware of the fact that they, you know, nobody tells them this when they're starting out. Because every, and everybody's focused on, you know, well, we want to have a successful company. Well, what's a successful company? Well, everybody's saying to them, well, you got to get big, you got to grow, you got to grow, you got to grow. What they need to realize is they have a choice. Mm -hmm. Their investors may want them to grow, 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 grow. They may be getting pressures from the marketplace to grow, 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 grow. But it's a choice. You don't have to do it. And if you want to have a great company, you can have a great company without doing that. I mean, size and greatness have got nothing to do with each other. Well, the global market, I think, has really helped that. You know, yes. I mean, I remember when I started my first media company. Yeah. It was all about big and market share and blah, blah, right. blah, right? And, and, and though I was working on a very specific market, so mm -hmm. I can only grow, could grow so big, right? right. But for, for me as an entrepreneur, it was how can I get as big as I can get as quick as I can get there, right? Yeah. And I have to say that it was the most miserable time of my entire life. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I was making the most money ever, but it was the most miserable time because I had no time for me and my family. Yeah. Um, I'm making those decisions now. Yeah. Opposed to right. getting there and then waking up in the morning and being like, oh my gosh, what have I done? Yeah. Right? Right, exactly. I'm making those decisions early on. Yes. About how I want my life and my business life to be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, business, what people forget is that business is a means to an end. That's a matter of choice. I mean, it, it may be that you want to totally. Uh, you know, revolutionize, you know, if you're Steve Jobs or, or Bill Gates, it mm -hmm. was, you know, everybody's going to have, it's going to be a PC on every desk. Well, that's okay. If, mm -hmm. You know, if you can pull it off, that's okay. But um, if your goal is to have a happy life, right. uh, if your goal is to have a company that you can feel really proud of, if your goal is to have a great impact on the, your community so that your community is really a different, better place because you've been there. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I, I, I agree with you. I think that we were all, I was, in my last interview, Yeah. Um, the gentleman was talking about how VC and funding money mm -hmm. um, was, they were looking for tens and, and $20 million and yeah. how less expensive it is now to launch a business, Yeah. right? And, and so I think that it's a, sort of the same premise, right? It comes with the choices that we make as people and as entrepreneurs yeah. and CEOs and founders of businesses, yeah. where we want to go with our life. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't that way, I don't think. For Or it was. It would ju just wasn't. Well, it wasn't talked about. Right. I mean, right. It, I mean you know, the companies, the, the, this phenomenon is, is actually not new. I mean, I thought it was new, but it's really not. It's also not an American phenomenon. It's a very much right. an international phenomenon. There's a group of people who read Small Giants, and they have great companies themselves and they decided they wanted to be in touch with each other and I said look go ahead and do it I'll support you I can't do it myself but if you want to do it go ahead and do it and they created this thing called the small giants community which mm -hmm. is global uh, in fact later on the, the the CEO of the small giants community um, is in Vietnam at this point where he's working on the launch of a small giants community there and he's going to be joining me uh, this afternoon when, I, when I'm talking. But uh, they weren't acknowledged, they weren't recognized. I've had so many people come up to me and say, 
I read your book. That that's us. That's who we are. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's almost like just by giving them a name, by saying, okay, you know, there's the mom and pop store. There's the fast-growing tech company. Blah blah. There are all these other different types of of uh, of small, growing entrepreneurial companies. And then there's this group that are the small giants. And these are the companies that are absolutely the best at what they do, the best in the world at what they do. Their competitors say so even. Yes, even right. their competitors will say, you know, these guys are the best. We like being compared to them. Mm -hmm. They're places where people love to work. They're places whose customers adore them. And growth then becomes a byproduct of that. It's not that these companies have stopped growing. All of them, all the, almost all the companies in my book, you know, continue have continued to grow. But it's not their goal. It's not. It's, it's byproduct of these other goals that they have. There's a wonderful story in the book about mm. the gentleman from San Leandro and uh -huh. his wife. Yes, right. And the thirty dollars on the balance sheet. Right, right? I gotta right. love that. Um, you stayed in there that he. Once he got the money that he needed, the funding. Yeah. You have to read this, you guys. It's amazing. This is like <laughs> this guy is amazing to me. Um, you mentioned that once he got his funding, and then he started to go sort of on the fast track, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That he then was grappling with that decision, like, okay, wait, do I want to be that big? I mean, now well, this he, is at a that guy, point, he, right? he got he got to a point where he really, because he ran out of money, uh -huh. and he literally had, as you say, $30 in right. the balance sheet. I mean, he put up, he was trying to raise money, put up a slide, and uh, the slide was a, a uh, was the balance sheet, and he said, by the way, the $30 is $30, <laughs> is not in thousands. Right. And uh, everybody laughed. Uh, he was able to raise the money. The promises he then made to get employees to come and work uh, for less than they could have made elsewhere. Um, he really had to have a way for them to cash in at some point. And fortunately for him, he was flexible about this, and he was able to, it is an amazing story. Uh, in fact, <laughs> he happens to be right here today at, at, at a board meeting because he is now no longer the uh, CEO. He's the major shareholder, he's the largest shareholder, but he's no longer the CEO, he's no longer the chairman because uh, the company is going to go public and he doesn't want to be the chairman of a public company. Uh, but he's still very in, in, involved in that. But he's basically moved on now. He's got a new project that, uh, that, that, that he's on to. But, you know, things worked out well for him. Right. Not bad for a guy with $30 on his balance sheet. Not either, bad right? at all, no. no. So I am honored to spend this time with you. Well, I'm honored that you would invite me to spend this time really, with you. Really, I, Thank I, you, I am. This book, guys, you got to get it. It's Bo Burlingham, Small Giants. It's amazing. He's amazing. HP, thank you very much for allowing us to be here today. Is there any word of advice to entrepreneur? One-liner. Tell them. Um, yeah. The first thing you should do is to have a vision of where you want to wind up. Uh, and I don't mean by that just what kind of a company you have. It's what kind of a life you want to have. You know, people ask me, they say, you know, we love your book. Um, we'd like to have a company like this. How do we do this? And, and I always say the first step is to sit down and dream and create a picture, a picture of what your life is going to look like in 10 years what the business is going to look like in 10 years. What kind of a business do you want it to be? If the answer to that question is do you want to have, you know, revolutionize your industry, go for it. You know, if you can pull it off, more power to you. There aren't very many people who can, but if you can, you know, go for it. But if that's not what's most important to you, if what's most important to you is to have a really great business that's yours, and that you've created, and that you can look with great pride uh, at what you've accomplished, then maybe it's something else. And you just have to be aware that this choice is going to exist, um, because a lot of people aren't. Thank you.
My pleasure. Grateful. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. We're out from HP Cupertino, California Briefing Center. Thank you very much.